What's going on, everybody? This is Sheets, and we're going to be doing our MMA contrarian betting breakdown uh, for this very, very packed UFC 299 card. Um, and we're going to do the same thing that we always do. We're going to take a look at what the most common narratives are with respect to you know how the industry and how the Twitter geniuses and everybody who just listens to one another uh, and just kind of gets a feel for what's going to happen have all agreed upon as what's most likely to happen in these fights and uh, presume, uh, ergo, that those are going to be the most overbet spots and attempt to fade it. Now, again, it's important for those of you that are here for the first time um, why we're doing this, okay? Um, I firmly believe that betting markets such as this are usually pretty efficient, okay? Um, the only edge that you can really get is trying to figure out what part of a line is driven more by kind of narrative and baloney to, to, to you know, to coin a, a statistical term than actual, uh, you know, actual probabilities. In addition to that, it's important to try to be able to gauge the psychology behind these sides. Like what are people believing as opposed to what actually could happen? And I know it sounds a little bit touchy feely, but, but that's really the way that I always analyze betting markets like this when there's a big where that's, you know, there's a lot of liquidity where it's tough, you know, to just presume that these lines are wrong without having some edge uh, in, in figuring out why that could be. And this is the same logic that I use, the same philosophy uh, behind analyzing the stock market, behind analyzing all types of betting markets. And um, the, the purposes of these videos is, yes, to give you an idea of what, you know, what possibly good bets are for this car, but also to kind of train your mind into, into not always believing that the most likely outcome is what you should be betting. Okay. And not even the most likely outcome, but the, the easiest kind of coolest thing to bet that makes so much sense is probably going to be the overbet side of these types of things. And as I've talked about in con constantly, MMA, MMA, UFC, whatever, is particularly suited to this type of analysis or anti-analysis because it's a sport that is ripe with chaos. You know, you have two guys or girls just going after each other, trying to kill each other. And yet, for some reason, you can have an entire industry completely set on either one fighter being just a lock or worse, having a binary outcome where it's either A wins this way or B wins that way. And it just doesn't work that way. And, and even though, again, it's possible that what the public believes is most likely to happen, that doesn't mean that that's what you should be betting because that is almost always going to be the overbet side. So we're going to go through these fights and we're going to we're going to have a pretty good idea of what the public believes and we're going to tr try to fade it. And again, I can't promise you anything except for the fact that we're going to be contrarian. And I can almost promise you that I'm not going to say that what we're going to be recommending is good value, but it's going to be better value. How about that? Than than the most popular and the best that you probably would have made otherwise. Okay. Um, so let's go over the rules here. Uh, there are 14 fights on the card, so we got a lot of money to lose here. So we are going to bet one thing on each fight. And, uh, you know, that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Secondly, we're going to be betting one unit on every fight. And that is not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. And for us, one unit is going to be, even though it's a full 14 fight card, it's still going to be $180. Um, that's just my unit. Uh, and I do think it's healthy to tell people what I'm actually betting. Uh, I know that people like to quote units because I don't know, because, you know, obviously some people's bankrolls are different than the others, but I just think it's, I don't know. I think it's healthy to know exactly what a person is betting. And I will be betting this exact, you know, as soon as this video is finished. Um, I will also say, and I've been kind of hedging over the last like several weeks, but I have to, I have to be, you know, as the kids say, keep it real, you know, in, unless there is, a, a narrative, unless there's a, a public side, unless there's something that I feel there is some kind of slant, there really isn't a great spot in every single fight to be contrarian. Okay. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to emphasize which fights I think are least likely to have this type of edge. But just to keep the, the process going, I'm going to be betting the same amount every fight anyway, just 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 for the hell of it. Let's put it that way. Um, and I thought of just identifying the fights where I, where I had a really big lead, but I think I can emphasize it along the way. Like, let's just get started. So the first fight of the night, uh, Joanne Wood, a.k.a. Calderwood versus Mariana Morose. Um this is probably the fight where I am the least interested in taking contrarian stance because I really don't have any idea where the public is. You know, um, I've heard I've heard cases made for both sides of this. Um, I've heard literally everything and, and no big lean one way or the other. So I think this line is pretty efficient and you really can't get contrarian. So what we're going to do is just for literally for nothing else to do. We're going to latch upon the idea that Joanne Calderwood was considering maybe retirement or, you know, that she was, uh, or, and that's why she's coming back or something. I don't know if for no other reason, uh, we'll, we'll just go ahead and take the, um, and take the underdog here. So Joanne Calderwood plus the 198, the 195 for 180. Uh, let's see. And again, really no lean. Uh, I would not, uh, what you might call it? I would not. Oh, we have to log in. It's not going to let me. But we'll 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 figure it out. Let's 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 log in. Boy, it's not going to let me do this, is it? Yeah, it's going. It's it's going. It's going to it's going to yell at me here. But that that that's fine. We'll we'll, we'll look around. So we're going to put these here. Bad placement unavailable. Okay, that's fine. I guess. Um, crap. But okay, we'll figure it out. So we're going to take Joanne Wood plus the 195 for 180. Okay, next, we're going to play, we're going to look at CJ Vergara versus Asu Al Almabayev. And this uh, is another one, which uh, the only thing I would say is that, you know, everybody seems to agree that Almabayev is going to win. Um, and however, no one's going to really want to lay the, 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 the 575. So again, this is just a, a, a fight where there's really is no public lean one way or the other. So I really have no, have nothing to say about it, honestly. Um, what we can do is do this. So Alma Baev, they are saying that if he wins, he's going to be getting a bunch of takedowns and, either win by its decision or submission. So if we really want to be contrarian, what we can do is we can play Amabaya by KO. Okay. Um, so that would be Amabaya by KO plus 600 uh, for 180. I promise you no one's playing this. Uh, and as a result, I have a feeling this is probably decent value. But again, not the best. Now let's get into this. So let's now we're going to start to get into some into some uh, some fights where people have been agreeing on stuff, and we've had a lot of leans and things like that where we can get a little more action. And thankfully, it's not the first two terrible fights in the card anyway. So we have Robelis Despagni or Despain uh, against Josh Parisian. So you have this guy who is just a a Taekwondo uh, medalist who is like he looks huge, and he has three or four fights in the, not UFC, but in uh, lower level, whatever. And I think the total of the four fights was about, took about a minute. I mean, he knocked out one guy in like eight seconds, another guy in 12 seconds, another guy in nine seconds, whatever. And they're bringing him in to fight Josh Parisian, who is essentially known throughout the industry as the worst, one of the worst heavyweights there is. Um, and it's, it's, looks like a completely fixed fight you know they're bringing in this guy with all this hype and giving him literally the worst guy that you can probably give a guy or one of them and yet <laughs> the line is only minus 340 okay so this is like the this is like uber fishy okay um if this guy really is such a stud and Parisian really is the worst. Wouldn't this be more like minus 600? Um, so we're going to go ahead and just close our eyes and, and 
this is like so brutal. There's only two ways you can really play this. And you could, you could play Parisian just plus the 270. But if you didn't want to do that, I mean, this is a pretty good opportunity to take the over, right? Um, because this idea is that this guy, we don't know if he has any cardio and, and, and he's probably going to knock him out in the first round. And if not, maybe Parisian finishes him. So let's take a look at some of these over bets here. So we have to go the distance plus 600. That's one thing we can do. The over is, what is that? Fight props, round props. Fight to start round two plus 165. I can't, I can't make it one round. You know what? We're going to try. We're, we're just going to try. Because what I was thinking of doing is playing something like Boy, oh boy, do you know if I played the Spain by decision, I'm gonna get 14 to 1. Well, well, okay, hear, hear me out for a second. Just hear me out. Why is he why is this line 14 to 1? Like why why do they think he can't get a decision? Because his other fights didn't go to a decision. Right? I mean. He is a medalist at Taekwondo, which means he has to have some cardio, no? And he's got to be able to do something. I mean, he, excuse me, he doesn't look completely out of shape or anything like that. What, can we really do this? Good grief. All right, we're, we're, we're going to try. Uh, Disbanding by decision plus 1,400 for 180. God help me. All right, I promise you no one has that, so that's obviously good news. All right, Michelle Peheya versus Michael Olegzaychuk. Um, so this one we 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 kind of like. Uh, um, so here's the idea. Olegzaychuk is the guy that's going to be completely going forward, okay? And if Peheya is going to win, it's going to be either keeping him at bay, keeping him at range, maybe going for takedowns, things like that, okay? Um, so... Those are the things you can't really bet. Like you can't bet Paheya by decision. And you can't bet all his Chuck kind of by KO or anything on the aggressive side. The only thing you could do to really be contrarian is to play Paheya inside or maybe all Chuck by decision. So let's take a look at some of these here. So Paheya by, let's just see, inside the distance. Winning method, Paheya inside the distance would be plus 175, or we could look at, let's see, Olegzaychuk oh, by decision, plus 450. We're going to take the, um, boy, Olegzaychuk oh, by decision, plus 450. I'm going to try it. All right. Uh, Ayan Kutalaba versus Philippe Linz. Um I, I, this is, I, I know we're going to lose because there's such an easy narrative here and we're just going to fade it. The idea is that Ayan Kutalaba has three minutes of cardio. And if he's going to win, he's going to win in the first round. And if he doesn't get him out of it in the first round, Philippe Linz is going to take over and either win late or a decision. So what you cannot bet is Ian Kutalaba round one. And you cannot bet Philippe Linz by decision or in rounds or two or three. Because those are what that's what everybody's betting. So our only choices are playing Philippe Linz round one or Ian Kutalaba late or by decision. So let's take a look at some of these. Uh Kutalaba. Well, I, I don't know the, the the different, I don't I don't care the, the method of victory here. Let's see round props. Kutalaba round two. Plus 650. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Kutalaba by decision. Plus 750. Boy, can we get away with that? Can't we, can't we just get a bunch of takedowns and have Linz just survive? Probably not. So Kutalaba, we're going to go round two plus 650, unless we play Philippe Linz round one, and these are just too, too short. So 
Kudalaba round two plus six fifty for one eighty. Okay, um, moving on. Pedro Munoz versus Kyler Phillips. All right, so Kyler Phillips, where everybody kind of agrees, is going to win. But I've been hearing a little bit about his his cardio, maybe that he's not really a finisher or anything like that. So everybody's kind of convinced that Tyler Phillips is going to win by decision here. Um, so we're going to have to play Kyler Phillips inside the distance. And the question is, is whether you whether you go for the round one or the opposite, or you play for the really late, you know, like really late finish. We're just going to just play him in general inside the distance. It's not that big of a price, but you're really not hearing too much about Kyler Phillips' finishing ability because most of his results are by decisions. So let's just go ahead and do that. Kyler Phillips, winning method. Um, by TK or submission. Plus 330. Wow, it's pretty strong. Okay. Tyler Phillips inside, plus 330 for 180. Mateus Gamrod versus Rafael Dos Anjos. So we have basically wrestler versus wrestler here. And uh, th the problem here is that no one's really respecting the, the Rafael Dos Anjos wrestler. You know, um, you're you're getting an overwhelming consensus here that Gamrod is going to go in a win. Now, you're, you're hearing some thoughts about how he can, you know, mostly it's going to be kind of like some boring, you know, takedown based decision for Gamrod. Um, so Gamrod by decision is probably not going to be playable. That's just way too popular. But what about Dos Anjos by decision? You know, I mean, if he wins, are, isn't that where his his path to victory is going to come from? Well, yeah, so that's why we can't bet that, because that's what people are probably going to do also. <sighs> this is, again, a real tough one. So what we're just going to have to do is just go Dos Anjos and just take the 330. Tough fight to get contrarian on. So we'll just take Dos Anjos plus the All right, Caitlin, formerly Chukagian versus Macy Barber. So this one is pretty easy to me. I mean, this is the, first of all, it's the ultra hipster play of the week. You know, everybody's on Caitlin Chukagian as that live underdog for some reason. Because um, Macy Barber with the bad fight IQ uh, and that all she is is this kind of a brawler. Um, but people are conceding that if Macy Barber does, you know, does, you know, does her thing, you know, she does have a lot of finishing upside. So what we're going to do is play Macy Barber by decision. Macy Barber, let's see, Macy Barber by decision, just plus 100. That's all I'm getting. Oh, my God. That's terrible. Maybe it's such a terrible, maybe it's such a terrible bet that has a chance to win. That's, that's an atrocity. Okay, Curtis Blades versus Jailton Almeida or Jailton Jr., depending on who you ask. And this is another just insanely popular underdog here. You have Curtis Blades, uh, who, who, yeah, he's had some fight IQ issues, but he's got probably the better wrestling, apparently. He's just much bigger, and he's got an insane striking advantage. And then you have Jelton Almeida, who essentially has been been gifted uh, his wins recently. I mean, he's been giving everybody he's been fighting or someone who are, are fighters that can't defend takedowns. And yet he couldn't even finish Derek Lewis it was just sitting on it for five rounds. I mean, Curtis Blades has all of it, but yet still Almeida is still somehow a favorite. So we're, we're just we're just going to just take the Almeida. We're going to fade the hipster play of the week and we're just going to, we'll, we'll just take him plus the 110 or something like that. I don't know how else to play this. So 
actually minus the 115. So Jelton Almeida, money line for 180 minus the 115. Okay, uh, now we're at the last, what, four or five fights? We're doing pretty well here. Piotr Jan versus Sonia Dong. This is another one, man. This, this is a pick em fight where I would say 90% of the action, or 90% of the takes at least, are on Piotr Jan. And, you know, I, I've, just, I've just been around the block way too long. And it makes sense. You know, what happens is you're making all these excuses for Piotr Yan for all of his fights. You know, they're like, well, he probably had got the acute against Sterling. Well, it was a tough uh, decision to against the O'Malley, got robbed. Well, against Marab, okay, Marab is Marab. But Piotr Yan, aside from that, you know, should be champ. Okay, aside from that, you know what I mean? Like if if, <laughs> if my grandmother had wheels, she'd be a trolley car. Okay, the fact is that he finds ways to lose. And... So all Sonia Dong is doing is improving, you know. Sonia Dong had a tough fight against Sandhagen, but aside from that, I mean, he's been doing great. So I don't know. You have a pick and fight where no one's playing one of the sides. We'll go ahead and do it. We'll take Sonia Dong, just plus the one hundred five, okay, for one eighty. No, no big deal. All right. Um, Gilbert Burns versus Jack Della Maddalena. Well, you hear I'm hearing some stuff on both sides here. Um, you're you're hearing people with the Gilbert Burns side. You're hearing people with Jack D. But what people are a hundred percent sure about how this fight's going to go. Okay, so Jack Delma and Elena has the striking advantage, right? We know this. So if he's going to win, he's either going to get a KO, or he could win a striking based decision. Gilbert Burns' only path to victory are getting takedowns. OK, and takedowns and perhaps submissions. So. What can we not bet? Well, we can't bet Jack Dillon and Elena by KO, and we really can't bet him by decision. We can't bet Gilbert Burns. By submission. So all we can do is probably play either Burns by KO, which is pretty obscene, or Burns by decision. So let's take a look at some of these some of these odds. Uh, Burns by decision plus 450. Let's go. I mean, what if he gets takedowns but doesn't submit him? You know, from all I've heard is that, you know, Jack Del Malena, he's, he's been, he was very uh, durable when he got in those submission holds against, uh, who's it, Angel Lusa and somebody else. So who says that Burns has to finish him? Oh, I like this. Burns by decision for 180. All right, now I forgot one rule, which we're going to get to in a minute, okay? and that rule being what we're going to do in the main event. We're going to get there in a second. All right, Kevin Holland versus Michael Page. This is going to be like, again, I must be a big sucker here because you have Kevin Holland, who's a minus 120 favorite, and everybody loves Kevin Holland. He's been, he fights like four times a year, Everybody's been watching him for the last four years, like in the UFC. And you have this Michael Page dude who just comes in out of nowhere, making his UFC debut at 36. Okay. And Kevin Holland is only a minus 130 favorite. Okay. And, and at minus 130, I think 99.9% .9 of touts are on Kevin Holland. And, and they, 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 they're, they're worried about maybe he doesn't, you know, he, doesn't go for takedowns. Maybe his fight IQ is not so great. But at the end of the day, why is Kevin Holland only minus 130, people are saying? Well, that's good enough for me. I will take Michael Page plus the, what is it, 114, and probably be the only one. All right. Uh, last two fights. We have two bangers, as the kids like to say. Uh Dustin Poirier versus Benoit Saint Denis. So here we go. I've seen this a lot. This is this is this is the deal. Dustin Poirier, he's a legend. He's fought all the best competition. Okay. And unfortunately, now he's against Benoit Saint Denis, who's who's this up-and-coming young guy who has just done nothing wrong, just been killing people. And this is what happens. All right. You you have the you have the up-and-comer against the guy that's sort of on the way out. Okay. 
but this is what you're hearing. You're hearing this. Boy, this line is just too wide. Okay, you're hearing this line is just too wide. And yet, you know who's actually pulling the trigger on Poirier? Nobody. Okay, you're hearing everybody say how the line is too wide. And yet, people are still saying, ah, but you know what, I'm taking the same thing anyway. So we're just going to do it. We're going to take Poirier. We're going to take the 180 and be the sucker that plays the, the, the name guy. Uh, oops, hold on a minute. Not that one, we got to go. Where was this? Uh, Poirier plus 180 for 180. So I forgot to mention the last bit of the rules, and those are this. That's this. Uh, since we are going to presume that we're being contrarian and playing stuff that we know is going to lose, we're going to presume that we need to get all of our money back in the in the in the main event. Now it's not necessarily true because we're not playing that huge underdogs, but we like to have some fun here. And so what we try to do is in the main event, I want to give you something that will get all your money back if you lose every single fight. So we need to find something that not only is contrarian, not only has a remote chance to win, but is 13 to one. Good luck. Let's take a look. We have Sugar Shane O'Malley versus Marlon Vera. So this is, I, you guys ain't gonna like this one, okay? But I'm gonna tell you what is actually the best bet you can make first. And it's not gonna be 13 to one. But I will promise you that this wager is going to be plus EV or, well, it's going to be good value, I guess. Is that the same thing? Maybe. If it, in fact, happens. So I see people on Vera. I see people on O'Malley. But this is the thing that everybody agrees that and this is the ultra hipster play of the of every time Marlon Vera play, uh, fights is Marlon Vera is a slow starter. And he comes on late. So what you're supposed to do is wait till the end of round one. And if he lost, you bet him to win the fight after round one. As if, as if the sports books don't know that people are going to do that already. As if the sports books aren't going to destroy you on the actual line that they give you for that. And we did this one when he was against Sanhagen. Sanhagen, he, he, Sanhagen was obviously after the first round well, at least to me, that that it was going to be a Sanhagen takedown fest and, and, and Vera would have just no answers. But everybody is, is saying the same thing. Vera can still throw a slow start. Let's just go ahead and bet him. So what you're really supposed to do is wait till the end of the first round. And if O'Malley wins the first round, then bet O'Malley. Okay, That's what you're really supposed to do. But you're not going to be able to get 13 to 1 on that. Um, but that is probably the best EV play of the day. Uh, and you might not even get it because Vera might uh, might not uh, lose the first round. To that point, we're go we're gonna try this. And the good thing is, it's 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 the quick and painless. All right. Actually, we could go one of two ways. We're gonna go with this narrative that Vera is the slow starter, which means that what's gonna be good value are two things. Number one, O'Malley late. Or number two, Vera round one. Okay. So those are those are our two options. We can either pl play Vera round one or O'Malley round four or O'Malley round five to be contrary. So let's take a look. Let's see what, what they're offering. Okay. Round props. Here we go. First, let's look at Vera. Vera round one. Oh, exactly what we need, plus 1,400. Okay. Or let's take a look at O'Malley. O'Malley round five, plus 2,200. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. I don't I really don't know which is better. I think they're I think they're both kind of juicy. O'Malley round four 
plus 1,800. That's a little bit better. I think. I think that one's a little bit better. So let's do it. Let's let's play O'Malley round four. And I've run so poor on these coin flips before. I was I was back and forth between like a sterling one like that 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 was going to be like twenty nine to one, and and I I clicked the wrong one. So it's either O'Malley round four, O'Malley round five, or Bear round one. Boy, oh boy. Fair round one would be so would be so beautiful, right? Because they because they're the slow starter. Ah, let's do it. O'Malley round four plus the 180. And we are going to uh probably lose all our money this week, but hopefully at least shows you at least how to how to think through some of this stuff. If I had to prioritize, uh like what I think are actually the best kind of contrarian plays here. I would say I like Michael Page. I like Sonia Dong. Uh, hmm. Those are probably my two favorites, I think, of like the whole card. I, mean, I think those are pretty good contrarian plays. They're not that off the wall. Um, Spagna by decision. That's that's a good old dart throw there. But um Poirier, I like Poirier, and this is good because these are, you know what, you Rob probably should if you're just going to watch the main card or the point uh, the pay per view card. These are probably the best. Ah, the Dos Anjos play is kind of crap, but I think Almeida is a good play. Sonia Dong is a good play. Burns is a good play. Burns by decision, I think, is pretty good play. I guess Michael Page, I think, is nice contrarian. I think Poirier is good. And this is just kind of a dark throw. But uh, that will do it. Uh, good luck, everybody.